Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Hoover's Gap, located in Bedford and Rutherford Counties, Tennessee, between Union Major General William S. Rosencrans, along with four regiments of Union soldiers, consistent of the 98th and 123rd Illinois Infantry Regiments, and the 17th and 72nd Indiana Infantry Regiment. Against them was Confederate General Braxton Bragg and his 9th Alabama Infantry, 37th Georgia Volunteer Infantry, the Consolidated 15th and 37th Tennessee Infantry Regiments, the 20th Tennessee Infantry Regiment, along with Caswell's 4th Georgia Sharpshooter Battalion, the Ufala Alabama Battery, the Manny's Battery, and all of this occurred from June 24th to June 26th, 1863. Union General William S. Rosencrantz had remained in the area of the Battle of Stones River. He was marshaling his forces to prepare for an offensive. Meanwhile, General Bragg had reacted to Rosencrantz's presence by fortifying the Duck River from McMinnville to Shelbyville, stationing his artillery and infantry detachments to guard three gaps, known as Guy's Gap, Liberty Gap, and Hoover's Gap. Union command had learned that Confederate Bragg had intended to detach a larger force to help break the Union siege of Vicksburg. Hoping to avoid this, Union command pushed General Rosencrantz to attack Bragg immediately. This was in order to stop the reinforcements before they started. Hoping to catch Bragg by surprise, on June 23rd, Rosencrantz forces faked an attack against the Confederates at Shelbyville. In support of this attack, Union Major General Alexander M. McCook attacked Confederate Lieutenant General William Hardy at Liberty Gap. Meanwhile, Union Major General George H. Thomas had moved his troops close to Hoover's Gap. To the Union's extreme left, Union Major General Thomas L. Crittenden's 25th Corps moved into Bradyville. Union infantry under U.S. Colonel John T. Wilder pushed into Hoover's Gap itself, using a harsh rainstorm on June 24th as cover. It was at this time that Colonel Wilder's choices before the battle would save him, his men, and the battle. A major cause of the victory was that Wilder had purchased and sold directly to his soldiers at cost the new seven-shot Spencer repeating rifle. Repeating rifles would save the day for the undermanned defenses as Union troops were attacked by Confederate forces. It was during this attack that General Braxton Bragg realized the Union had suckered him with the fake attack. By June 26, Bragg was forced to retreat due to Rosencrantz's careful planning and maneuvering. Bragg moved his troops to use the Tennessee River at Chattanooga as protection against the oncoming Union forces. Rosencrantz's victory was bittersweet, however. His excellent maneuvering and victory was only celebrated for a short time before the Union wins at Vicksburg and Gettysburg would drown the applause for the Battle of Hoover's Gap. His resentment can be seen in his message to the Union Secretary of War, Edwin M. Stanton. His words rang with frustration as he said, and I quote, You do not appear to observe the fact that this noble army has driven the rebels from Middle Tennessee. Unquote. Casualties for the Union were very small for the size of the battle, coming in at less than 590 men killed, wounded, or missing. Meanwhile, Confederate losses were believed to be very heavy, but no numbers have ever been given. The lack of relative losses for the Union can be traced directly to Wilder and his seven-shot repeating rifles a signal of how war would change in the next 50 years. Now, for our news of the day, where we try to give a little bit of color from reporting of the same papers that reported the battle, we noted an article in the July 4th issue of the Daily Sentinel that, re that reported that a Confederate officer and Englishman named Colonel George St. Ledger Grenfell, inspector and staff officer for General Braxton Bragg, was arrested for stealing black people. This article isn't clear, but the assumption would be they were slaves. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.